everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, you know, in those like 1980s action TV shows, like always starring Chuck Norris, you'd have the the guys standing outside, like the henchmen standing outside the uh, villain's lair and talking about how boy, it's sure is quiet. Nothing. What a boring night. Nothing going on. That was you and I talking over the weekend about, boy, can't believe we haven't had more players from Ohio State go on the transfer portal. Only two so far on the, the deadlines on Tuesday. And boy, I can't believe there's only going to be two players going in the transfer portal. Tony, breaking news, a third Buckeye has entered the transfer portal. Indeed, a third Buckeye and a second safety as Jihad Carter is heading into the portal. A guy that the Buckeyes got from the portal last year uh, apparently kept the receipts. I don't know. Um, but came from Syracuse where he was a three-year starter, very productive player for the Orange, but it just never happened for him at Ohio State. And last year enrolled early, got here in time for spring, but dealt with injuries in the spring. And I remember talking to Jim Knowles, like, did you see enough from him to know what he can do? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we saw enough from him. But only ended up playing in eight games last year, five tackles. But was a guy, we talked about it at the time, thought they brought him in to be a starter somewhere. Yeah, and he had started a bunch for Syracuse, played some in the slot for Syracuse. And we thought, okay, maybe this is where he fits. And then yeah, he suffered, he, he got hurt during a practice that we were at last spring, spring of 2023. And I think it was a knee and you just, you didn't see him for the second half of the spring. And it felt like, boy, you know, a real missed opportunity there to show what, what he could do. And then you saw some other talent emerge and Jordan Hancock really solidified that, that slot uh, corner spot. So it was like, okay, well, that's not going to be it. And Lathan Ransom looked pretty good at the bandit spots. I was like, okay, well, that's not going to be it. And Josh Proctor, you know, after years and years of Josh Proctor being, well, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Josh Proctor really did a nice job at that that field safety spot, that adjuster spot last year. And then there really wasn't a spot for Jahan Carter. And I think he kind of had some lingering injury stuff. And he was kind of maybe banged up a little bit this spring as well. We didn't necessarily see him all the time this spring. And it just, you know, with the addition of Caleb Downs and with, you know, Malik Hartford coming in last year and they're feeling pretty good about, good about him and Lathan Ransom coming back this year and Josh uh, Jordan Hancock coming back this year. It just sort of felt like he couldn't stay healthy, you know, consistently healthy, which would probably hampered him a little bit, but just the safety play at Ohio State overall is substantially better than it was when he was in the portal a year ago. And so there wasn't necessarily quite that clear path to the playing field that I think he maybe was expecting when he showed up. Yeah, and we've talked in the one of the uh, the morning show maybe for uh, Monday or so about the lack of safety production at Ohio State as it relates to the NFL draft. And looking at Jihad Carter, had he maybe originally gone to Ohio State, he probably would have played quite a bit. He was a a ten game starter as a true freshman, started eight games in 2021, but missed four weeks of action that season with some sort of an injury. Then started nine games his junior year, and then came to Ohio State with two years of eligibility. And like you said, this spring, this spring we didn't really see him much. And uh, times we didn't see him at all. And even in the spring game, he was out there. And then he he went to the locker room for like a long period of time and came back out during warmups and and was not dressed. So this is not a huge surprise when you consider, as you said, everybody that has been returning, you go into the portal and you get Caleb Downs. So there's really no room there. And he kind of already got pushed. Like Malik Hartford kind of pushed past him last year in terms of, the playing time, then you know, Malik Harford struggled against Youngstown State, and I think Jihad Carter was thrown back into the game at that point. But if you're a at that point a senior, a four year senior, and you're really competing hard for a true fre- with, against a true freshman, you know the odds are kind of stacked against you at that point, and it wasn't going to get any easier. And he saw that this spring, when you look at really no need. At nickel, when you consider you had Jermaine Matthews there and and Lorenzo Styles Jr. in in addition to Jordan Hancock and then the situation at strong safety, I think 
I think maybe also seeing how well Jaden Bonitsu perhaps played redshirt freshman at strong safety because he was out there with the ones for most of spring because Lathan Ransom and Jihad Carter weren't out there. So, yeah, you, you lose somebody who has a ton of experience, not much experience at Ohio State, but a ton of experience and can do many different things. But the blessing of those injuries is that Jaden Bonsu got a bunch of good reps this spring. And that's definitely true. And ultimately, long term for Ohio State, that's going to be a better thing for them because this was going to be Jahad Carter's last season regardless. So you would have lost Lathan Ransom and Jahad Carter. So it wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have had him sort of waiting in the wings to take the job in 2025. And, you know, this is, I think when, when Jahad Carter came in, this was a raise the floor kind of move where, you know, it wasn't, this was not the equivalent of bringing in Caleb down. But when you had a safety room that was like a boy, you know, Lathan Ransom's had a bunch of injuries and you haven't really seen it from Josh Proctor and who knows who's going to play in the slot. You get a guy who's been a multi-year starter in the ACC and it's like, okay, so this is going to be at worst, if he's out there, not terrible. It'll be fine. And now I think they've, between the transfer portal additions, between getting some guys back, between some of the young guys like Bonsu and Hartford really developing, probably maybe even a little quicker than they were expecting, you're at the point where now you're looking for ceiling. Now those guys, the floor is fine with those guys. And now you're looking for a higher ceiling. And when you're looking at younger guys, you have more time to develop. You have not had, you know, three or four years of, you know, this guy is pretty okay, but has, you know, has already had those kind of growth spurts uh, mentally and, you know, in terms of his physical development in the college weight room and all that kind of stuff. So now you're looking for the higher upside, younger guys, and they have a lot more higher upside younger guys than they did a year ago, which really, I think, changes the whole dynamic around that room. And you're seeing, you know, Cedric Hawkins, who was one of the first guys to leave uh, right after the spring game, was someone who had gotten passed by guys younger than him. Jahad Carter, it, it sure felt like he had gotten passed by some guys younger than him. If you get passed by guys younger than you, there really isn't a path to the playing field. And if you're in your final year of eligibility, you want to go play somewhere. You don't want to, you don't want to sit the bench and watch necessarily. And so, you know, I, I have no, no insight whatsoever into where he's heading. But if I told you he was going back to Syracuse, I mean, that would not shock me at all. I'm not super familiar with the Syracuse depth chart, but he could very easily, you would assume, walk back in there and be a contributing member of that team for his final season or, you know, an, another place like that. This is, this is a guy who can play. It's just real, real hard to get on the field in the secondary at Ohio State right now because of the level of recruiting and the level of development that we've seen there the last couple of years. And the level of the age of the guys there now that have stuck around in, in Lathan Ransom and Josh Proctor last year specifically. In terms of destinations, Michigan could use some safeties. Uh, I'm just going to throw that one out there. We've seen stranger things over the last, oh, I don't know, month in, in terms like that. Uh, but... In his time at Ohio State, and I don't want to throw him under the bus or anything, but we really never saw much from him in the practice field or or in games. He played in uh, played defense six times, six games last year. Looking at uh, our buddy Dan Hope's snap counts at Eleven Warriors, six times and, and played two snaps on defense the last two games of the year. And I think back to the and I'm looking at the final name on this list of snap counts from last season, and it's. Brenton Inky Jones, who I think we have talked more about on this show over the last month, certainly over the last month than we have about Jihad Carter, a walk on safety who shows up on the practice field in terms of being around the plays and just never really saw that from Jihad Carter. But again, he was injured maybe about exactly maybe midway through spring last year. And I never really saw him this spring. So we didn't really have a ton of opportunities to see him in practices, but in games, really, either. I, I was surprised that he wasn't more of a contributor last year, but I also think you look at Ohio State having uh, argu arguably and statistically the best pass defense in the nation. It's just a, another level of talent than what Ohio State had been used to over the last few years at that position and in the secondary. Definitely. You look at the 2021 secondary and even 2022 secondary in terms of production, in terms of statistics compared to 2023. And it's just, it's a whole different level. That was a much, much better secondary in 23 than either of the previous two years. 
And you saw a bunch of transfers out in the 2021 and 2022 defenses as well. You saw a bunch of those guys kind of some of the corners, some of the safeties hit the portal as the, the level of talent in that room significantly improved. And I think some of that is some of the improvement last year is certainly, okay, year three of Jim Knowles and getting, you know, getting his guys in there and, and also guys understanding the playbook better and all that kind of stuff. But it's just, I think he found guys who are pretty good fits for what he wants to do and guys are buying in too. We talked in the first year of Jim Knowles defense of it all sounds good. Guys want to see it. They, you know, it all, you can talk a great game about what the defense is going to look like if it's in May. Guys want to see it on the field. And you have now seen significant improvement each of the last couple of years to the point where now it is sort of a little bit of a proven commodity and you're able to bring in more, you know, high, high end guys where you're not, you know, getting, you're not flipping a guy from Wisconsin or from wherever you're, you're pulling in the five star guys from, uh, some of the national, national pro, you know, nationally ranked safeties and nationally ranked corners. So that's a, uh, you know, that, that I think broadly is yes, the talent is better. And I, I'm right with you there with Carter, where you would see him out there. And I was like, who's, that? oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He's still here. And I think, I do think we should really make the point that injuries, I think did play a significant role in him never really getting a foothold in that secondary. Cause Every time you thought like, okay, now he has an opportunity to do it. It was like an injury and now he's, now he's out for the rest of the spring. Now he's, you know, and then you fall behind and then, okay, maybe, maybe he's back in the picture. Oh, another injury. And, you know, I think that's, I think that's a guy who can play. And I think that's a guy who can play at the power five level, as we've seen with his career at Syracuse. It just never really happened for him to Ohio State. And I think, I think it was really worth underscoring that I think the injuries played a, played a role in that. Yeah. I think he can go somewhere and really contribute. And also. He doesn't have to be pigeonholed into I'm only a boundary safety or I'm only a field safety or I'm only this. I remember when he transferred to Ohio State talking to somebody who um, in the NFL, they felt like they they knew people that were scouting him as a corner because he's he's got legit size, ability to cover, just the health thing um, has been an issue. And the last thing I'll mention in terms of the the level of play that has risen over Jim Knowles years at Ohio State. I posted this on the Buckeye Huddle message board uh, brought to you by uh, Jeff Ruby, uh, the steakhouse. Um, the 2021 Ohio State defense in relation to itself and the NFL draft, here are, here are seven names in the secondary that were never drafted or probably won't ever be drafted. And they all started at one point or another for the Buckeyes in 2021. Ronnie Hickman, Seven Banks, Cameron Brown, Bryson Shaw, Court Williams, Cam Martinez, Marcus Williamson. Now, technically, Court Williams started at linebacker, but I can give you other names in that defense that did that started and uh, were not drafted. Teron Vincent, Jerron Cage, Antoine Jackson, Haskell Garrett, Taraji Mitchell, Steel Chambers. That is, I don't know, did I say 12 guys there that earned starts on that 21 defense? and weren't drafted or likely won't be drafted. Uh, certainly, uh, they may have 12 guys on next year's, on this year, <laughs> this year's defense get drafted. But um, the, a far cry from what we've seen in the past and another reason why Jihad Carter didn't get the, the amount of time that he probably thought he would. Uh, things have been raised. But again, as you mentioned, injuries being the key factor in all of this just could never really get any momentum going and when you're at a place like Ohio State, the competition isn't going to allow that. And if, if it does, it's because the competition isn't good enough. And last year, the competition at Ohio State was finally good enough. Uh, anything else before we get out of here? I think we've covered it. So get this. we'll get this one posted. And then uh, the transfer portal deadline is the end of the day on Tuesday. So we'll see if there's any other, any other names that end up popping in the portal to uh, beat, the, beat the deadline. But so far... Still just three Buckeyes in the spring, which I think is fewer than I was expecting. But, you know, the deadline's not here. And I think there's also, there's been, there's been a lot of talk about, boy, this could be a really good Ohio State football season. And you may have guys who, you know, I mean, there, there are worse places to spend a fall than a uh, Columbus, Ohio in a year when the, uh, the Buckeyes have a pretty good football team. So we'll, we'll see if anyone else joins those guys in the portal. Yeah, Tom, uh, quit yapping. I got to put this, this one out before something changes. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. 
Um, last thing I will remind you, we uh, at Buckeye Huddle are having a, a spring sale turn on uh, our annual subscriptions. So right now for the uh, low, low price of $69.99, you can have a full year subscription at BuckeyeHuddle.com. All of the content behind the paywall, the message board, access to us like you wouldn't believe. So um, it's, the, it's a nice spring sale for you to go ahead and get in on what is going to be what should be a pretty incredible year at Ohio State. Uh, covering the team, being around it, all those sorts of things. So check that out at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And of course, go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this video if you're watching it on YouTube or your five-star podcast ratings and reviews are always appreciated. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will talk to you guys later.